Okay. So from this presentation, it's clear that I'm not a developer of uh, Fosper G tools, but I'm a user. And I will uh, um, present uh, uh, you uh, an application of uh, uh, Fosper G tools related to uh, the problem of rockfalls. Rockfall is a particular kind of landslides uh, that is characterized by uh, relatively small uh, involved volumes uh, that are the falling blocks, but uh, high velocity and as high kinetic energy, high recurrence and high variability. So the risk condition for this posed element is really very high. In addition, the phenomenon is widespread over large areas and thus uh, it is a challenge for the public administration in mountain areas and coastal cliffs and so on uh, that really feel the need uh, for the development of uh, risk assessment and management uh, strategies for this kind of problem. Um, this is mainly a problem of scale. Um, I mean, uh, in the case of uh, widespread phenomena, uh, the analysis should be carried out at a medium-large scale, um, which means uh, that uh, the data that we can uh, um, collect uh, is, uh, really, uh, are really limited, are few, and uh, uh, so the purpose of the analysis uh, should be um, territorial planning, uh, urban or territorial planning, and uh, preliminary studies um, that can highlight the most critical zone of a wide area where uh, the public administrator that uh, must manage a low budget can decide how to um, use this budget to mitigate the risk. Uh, in this case, uh, um, data that we can collect are few, and so the methods that we can use uh, are, uh, can be very simple. Um, regardless of the scale of the analysis, uh, um, the um, risk uh, uh, analysis in the case of landslide, uh, in its classical uh, framework, uh, can be um, obtained through the combination of two different phases. Uh, from one side, the hazard analysis that is related to the uh, phenomenon, and uh, on the other side, the damage analysis that is related to the consequence of uh, the phenomenon on uh, the exposed elements. Um, the combination of these two phases gives uh, the uh, value of the risk. Uh, this uh, um, procedure was implemented by the Politecnico di Torino uh, in the, and other partners, of course, in the Emiriland method. The characteristics of the method are that uh, uh, each component of uh, the hazard and the damage analysis are kept separated from each other. And uh, uh, they are given in a numerical form uh, even simplified, uh, so the analysis can develop in consequent phases and uh, uh, through a matrix approach. In addition, each component of the risk is specially defined. So the GIS uh, is the natural environment for uh, the implementation of this kind of methodologies. Um, each component of the risk needs a method to be developed. Uh, with reference to the other hazard analysis in the case of Rockfall, we um, implemented a, a QGIS uh, uh, plugin called Cuproto in collaboration with Arva Piemonte, Regione Piemonte, and uh, Faunaglia. Uh, the method is based on a view shed analysis made through GRAS 7 uh, GIS module. Uh, and uh, is based on the CON method. The CON method um, assumes a CON uh, whose apex is uh, located in the viewpoint and uh, its dimensions are defined through some angles. These angles uh, assume in our uh, methods um, a mechanical meaning. I mean, they should represent all the factors that are many <laughs> that influence the rockfall phenomenon. Um, the intersection between the cone 
and uh, the uh, topographic surface gives uh, the limits of the invasion zone. In addition, uh, through very simple calculations, it is possible to estimate boulder velocities and uh, uh, thus the kinetic energy. So, one of the results of uh, the QProto uh, plugin are uh, data sets of uh, mean and maximum values of the kinetic energy in the involved area. And uh, the, these results uh, will be used for the subsequent phase of the risk analysis. This is the mask uh, of uh, uh, the plugin uh, with uh, all the data that can be uh, defined and uh, associated to the viewpoint uh, as attributes. Uh, so let's move to the example of application. It is referred to uh, a, a section of a valley in the northwestern Italian Alps, and the total investigating area is about uh, uh, 10 uh, square kilometers. And uh, the, um, the slopes are characterized by, as shown here, by uh, rocky outcrops that can release uh, uh, rockfalls. Uh, the site uh, has been prone to rock falls uh, since many years, uh, but unfortunately we don't have uh, enough data to carry out consideration on the temporal recurrence of the phenomenon. So uh, this is the, 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 the reason is that uh, these uh, events uh, were not uh, uh, collected, the data were not collected during the events. And this is a big problem for us because we could not uh, include any temporal consideration in our analysis. Uh, so the uh, potential uh, uh, rockfall sources were then selected on the basis of the digital terrain model provided by Regione Piemonte and some orthophotos. Uh, we uh, produced then a set of points extracted from these uh, zones uh, with a spacing of 20 meters and we obtained a data set of points. Uh, these points uh, can be, for a, a medium-large-scale analysis, clustered into homogeneous areas. We use, uh, to this aim, uh, the classification in slope units proposed by uh, Alveoli et al, available in the literature, um, that uh, use, the, again, uh, a grass model, that is uh, our slope unit, uh, nine slope units uh, uh, were highlighted in the uh, study area. Um, the meaning of the um, homogeneous area is that uh, the uh, attributes to be assigned to source points within each area are constant. And this is uh, um, very useful for us uh, because uh, we, we can uh, build uh, with few data a uh, data set for the analysis. Um, we um, assumed uh, three different scenarios of evolution of the phenomenon, um, identified through morphological considerations and some observation on site. Uh, the scenarios were uh, referred only to the volume of the block that can be released from each point uh, because we had no information on the recurrence, so we could not uh, uh, assign a temporal probability of occurrence to uh, each point. Um, so, for each point within uh, each uh, homogeneous uh, areas, the um, table of attributes uh, uh, were built uh, with all the information needed for the QProto analysis, and uh, the results uh, um, are provided in terms of uh, raster and vector datasets uh, related to the runout area, the block velocity and uh, kinetic energy, the frequency of invasion. This uh, information, these data sets, uh, are the input for the uh, subsequent uh, damage analysis. 
The damage analysis can be uh, easily uh, carried out uh, again uh, in the GIS environment. First of all, uh, we have to define which are the exposed elements uh, and it can be done uh, very easily through an overlay of the runout uh, raster map produced by QProto with a land cover map. Um, each element identified in this uh, way must be characterized uh, with reference to different aspects of the risk uh, problem. In particular, we considered here um, physical and social aspects of the problem. I mean, uh, physical means uh, the, is related to the strengths of the structures, buildings, uh, roads, and so on and uh, uh, the social is related to the presence of people. Um, so, to carry out uh, the um, damage analysis, we have uh, to uh, produce uh, uh, new data sets referred to the worth of each element, of each exposed element, the exposure to the phenomenon, and uh, the vulnerability. This uh, was done uh, in this uh, uh, work in, uh, very simple, through very simple considerations. Uh, for, the for the physical world, for example, we used an um, index uh, classification from 1 to 10. And for the exposure, uh, we made some consideration related to the position of each element with reference to the Rockfall source. And for the vulnerability, we... Uh, identified some, uh, uh, again, a classification of vulnerability with the reference to the impact uh, uh, kinetic energy, impact energy, sorry, um, of uh, the block against the element, um, based on uh, uh, literature data, as shown here. A similar consideration uh, we made for roads. Um, Similar consideration can be done, uh, similar uh, um, calculation can be done uh, with reference to the social damage. Finally, uh, we use all the data set produced, worth, exposition, and vulnerability to, um, through, a, again, an overlay and a very simple map algebra, uh, in this case, um, uh, some products. Uh, we combine uh, the um, maps, the, the data sets that we uh, produced to define the damage. This can be done for the physical aspect of the problem and for the social aspect of the problem. In the case, and this is the case, no information is available on the temporal probability of occurrence uh, of the phenomenon, the damage uh, map is uh, a, represent a risk map. I mean a specific non-temporal risk because tem time is not included in this analysis. This map can be uh, very useful for administrators because they allow us to compare different zones and to highlight the most critical, the one where the budget and all the efforts can be concentrated uh, for a more detailed analysis uh, uh, focus, for example, for, on the um, development of mitigation strategies. Um, we can uh, uh, keep, keep uh, separated these maps or we can also combine them to have a global uh, results uh, as shown here. Uh, here we um, combine the physical and the social risk map, uh, simply uh, summing up uh, them and through uh, uh, subsequent normalization with reference to the maximum value. This is the result that uh, uh, this methodology can give. Um, 
I conclude with uh, only some uh, um, final considerations. I shown here that uh, a open GIS approach, GIS approach, uh, allows to carry out a complete uh, risk analysis uh, over large areas, uh, provided a proper definition of the involved variables, uh, geometries, and uh, attributes and through the application of uh, very simple map algebra and overlay operations uh, on the basis of uh, methodologies, risk assessment methodologies. Um, the methods that uh, we, we use in this application are basically independent of the scale, but uh, uh, what is related to the scale what are related to the scale are the input uh, data that uh, are used for the analysis. Uh, when the input data are uh, few, the reliability of uh, the result uh, is affected by uh, this lack of data. And uh, um, in this sense, uh, uh, this kind of uh, analysis at medium-large scale is to be considered as preliminary, uh, useful, as I said before, to highlight uh, the most critical zone and uh, um, zones where the attention must be um, focused. However, uh, in particular, the geographic representation of the results, uh, both in terms of hazard and risk maps uh, is a very valuable tool for administrators because uh, it allows to compare different zones and to uh, give uh, a priority of intervention. Um, the open questions uh, are, uh, and, and improvements are many. I would like to focus on the methods because this is my field of work. Uh, and uh, uh, not only on the methods, but also on the data set. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the main problem in this kind of application are uh, the temporal probability of occurrence that at the moment cannot be defined in a reliable way uh, because data are missing. Uh, we need data on uh, landslide events, uh, specific data uh, that combines information on the volumes and uh, the points where the volumes are released and uh, the time when these volumes are released. In this, only in this way we can build a database sufficiently reliable to um, carry out uh, a temporal risk analysis. Other aspects of the problem still under study are the methods to evaluate vulnerability. Again, we need data also in this case because we need information uh, on the types of structures, uh, in particular for buildings. We, need, uh, we would need to know uh, the number of floors, uh, the type of uh, um, structure, uh, the material used uh, uh, for the structure, and so on. At the moment, this kind of information are still rare, uh, I mean, at least in Italy. And finally, this kind of uh, analysis can also be carried out uh, with reference to other types of landslides, uh, the diffused uh, landslides. Um, some, of, some methods still exist. What is missing is uh, an integrated UNIC GIS framework to carry out multi-risk analysis. And at the moment, we are working uh, mainly on these. Um, okay, uh, the a paper on this application uh, can be found at this uh, link. And um, I'm concluded. Thank you. Thank you.